Have you ever wondered why China's economy is slowing down? It's an interesting question, one that is increasingly relevant in our interconnected global economy. China, the world's second largest economic powerhouse, has been facing some headwinds recently. The International Monetary Fund or the IMF predicts a steady decline in China's economic growth over the next four years. But why is that? Well, the reasons are multifaceted and complex. One of the major contributors to this slowdown is an aging population, a demographic shift that is putting immense pressure on China's social and economic infrastructure. In addition, higher unemployment rates are causing concern. But perhaps the most headline-grabbing issue is a property crisis, with major Chinese property developer Evergrande facing a potential default on its massive debt. This crisis could have far-reaching implications not just for China's real estate sector, but for its entire financial system. So, if you're curious about the intricate details of this economic evolution, stick around, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts, for more enlightening videos. A major player in this economic slowdown is the property crisis with the spotlight on China Evergrande. The Chinese property market, historically contributing a significant chunk to the country's GDP, is currently grappling with immense difficulties. And at the heart of this crisis is China Evergrande, a real estate giant whose potential default on a staggering $300 billion debt has created waves of concern across global markets. Evergrande's shares have taken a nosedive and their bonds, along with their electric vehicle business, are under immense pressure. The possibility of a default by such a significant player in the property market could have far-reaching effects on China's financial system and real estate sector. This crisis is not confined to the world of high finance and property moguls. It's seeping into everyday lives, affecting consumer behavior and economic growth. With a shaky property market, consumers are understandably wary. This wariness could translate into reduced spending, which in turn, could further slow down the economy. The property market crisis is also a stark reflection of the broader issues plaguing China's economy. Local government debt and economic policies that have long favored supply-side economics are among the contributing factors to this downturn. And as the property market stumbles, these underlying issues are becoming harder to ignore. So what's next for China Evergrande and more importantly, what's next for China's economy? The International Monetary Fund, or IMF, has predicted a continued economic decline in China over the next four years. They warn of potential negative implications for domestic growth and trading partners if the property sector is not restructured comprehensively. However, this is not just about China. As the second largest economy in the world, a slowdown in China has ripple effects across the globe. With a looming property crisis, the stakes are high not just for China but for the entire global economy. In essence, the property crisis, embodied by the struggles of China Evergrande, is not just a company's problem. It's a national concern with global implications. It's a stark reminder of how interconnected our economies are, and how a tremor in one part of the world can send shockwaves across the globe. This property crisis is not just a company's problem, it's a national concern with global implications. Another contributing factor to China's economic slowdown is the country's aging population and rising unemployment. Let's take a moment to delve into the demographic changes happening in China. The country is experiencing a significant shift in its population structure with an increase in the number of older individuals. This is due to the long-lasting effects of the one-child policy, coupled with advancements in healthcare leading to increased life expectancy. The aging population is posing a serious challenge to the Chinese economy. It's a well-known fact that an older populace requires more resources, particularly in healthcare and social security. This puts a strain on the government's budget, diverting funds from other sectors like infrastructure and innovation. Moreover, as the working age population shrinks, there's a proportionate decrease in the labor force. This situation results in a decline in productivity, which can cause a significant slowdown in economic growth. Now, let's discuss the rising unemployment. China's unemployment rate has been creeping upwards in recent years. This is not only due to the demographic shift but also to the economic restructuring happening within the country. China is moving away from a manufacturing-based economy to a service-based one. This transition, though necessary for long-term growth, has resulted in job losses in the short term. Unemployment brings with it a host of issues. When people are out of work, they spend less, leading to a decrease in consumer demand. This drop can have a domino effect on the economy, causing businesses to cut back, 
leading to more job losses and a further decrease in spending. It's a vicious cycle that can be difficult to break. Furthermore, high unemployment can lead to social instability, which could have negative implications for the country's political and economic climate. The demographic shift and unemployment are major challenges that China needs to tackle to reverse its economic slowdown. It's clear that the country needs to find solutions to these issues as they are intricately tied to its economic health. But the question remains, how will China navigate these challenges? And what will be the global implications of its economic slowdown? As we move forward, we will explore the tensions between China and Western democracies and how they are adding to the economic pressure. So, stay with us, as we continue to unravel the complexities of China's slowing economy. China's economic slowdown is not only due to domestic issues but also influenced by its international relations. For starters, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the strained relations between China and the Western democracies, especially the United States. The world's two biggest economies have been locked in a bitter trade war for years now, with both sides levying tariffs on billions of dollars worth of each other's goods. This trade war has undoubtedly put a dent in China's economic growth. But it's not just about trade. The tensions also spill over into technology. Western nations have been wary of China's technological advancement, particularly in the realm of telecommunications and artificial intelligence. The US has placed several Chinese tech giants on a trade blacklist, hampering their global aspirations and adding another layer of complexity to China's economic trajectory. Moreover, there's the issue of human rights which has been a bone of contention between China and the Western democracies. Allegations of human rights abuses in regions like Xinjiang and Hong Kong have led to sanctions from the West, further straining economic relations. Now it's important to understand that these tensions don't occur in a vacuum, they have real-world implications. For instance, the trade war has disrupted global supply chains, making it harder and costlier for China to export its goods. The technology restrictions have hampered China's ambition to be a global tech leader. And the human rights-related sanctions have not only tarnished China's global image, but also hit sectors of its economy. One could argue that these tensions have forced China to pivot, to focus more on domestic consumption and less on export-led growth. Yet, this pivot is not without its challenges, and it certainly doesn't offset the economic impact of the ongoing tensions with Western democracies. Let's face it. In today's interconnected world, no country, no matter how powerful, can thrive economically without engaging positively with other nations, and China is no exception. International politics and economic strategies are intertwined and it's evident in China's current economic status. The International Monetary Fund has weighed in on China's economic slowdown and provided some recommendations. It's a scenario that's prompted much debate and discussion, especially given the significant role China plays in the global economy. The IMF's projections for China's economy over the next four years paint a picture of continued decline. An aging population, increasing unemployment rates and a looming property crisis are all driving this economic deceleration. By the year 2024 the IMF predicts that China's economic growth could decrease to 4.6%, slipping further down to 3.4% by 2028. But it's not all doom and gloom. The IMF has put forth some recommendations that could potentially steer China's economy towards a healthier trajectory. One of these suggestions is the exploration of new investment avenues. With the property market a significant part of China's GDP facing difficulties, it's crucial to diversify and find other sectors that can contribute to the country's economic growth. Another recommendation put forth by the IMF is the implementation of market-oriented reforms. These reforms could stimulate innovation and competition within the market fostering a more dynamic and resilient economy. By loosening market regulations, there's a chance to promote demand-side economic policies. These policies could stimulate consumer spending and inject some much-needed vitality into the economy. The key here is to balance short-term stabilizing measures with long-term structural reforms. This approach could help to alleviate the immediate economic pressures while setting the stage for sustainable growth in the future. However, it's important to remember that these are just recommendations. The actual implementation of these strategies and the impact they might have on China's economy is still uncertain. It will depend on a variety of factors, including the government's willingness to embrace these changes and the overall global economic climate. The future of China's economy is uncertain, but with the right strategies and reforms there's potential for recovery and growth. China's economic slowdown is not an isolated event, it has ripple effects across the globe. 
The challenges China is facing, from the property crisis to the aging population, from unemployment to tensions with Western democracies, are all interconnected pieces of a larger puzzle. The property crisis, exemplified by the potential default of Evergrande, a major Chinese property developer, is a significant aspect of this puzzle. This crisis doesn't just affect China's financial system and real estate sector, it also impacts global markets, affecting investors and economies worldwide. Meanwhile, China's aging population and rising unemployment rates are contributing to a decline in economic growth. This demographic shift and its economic implications aren't just China's problem. They're a global concern, influencing everything from international trade to immigration policies. The tensions between China and Western democracies also have far-reaching implications. These geopolitical frictions can affect trade relations, diplomatic ties, and global stability. They can also influence how the international community navigates issues like human rights and environmental sustainability. The International Monetary Fund's recommendations for new investment avenues and market-oriented reforms highlight the need for change. They also underscore the potential for China's economic situation to affect its trading partners and the global economy more broadly. In essence, the current state of China's economy is a stark reminder of our global interconnectedness. What happens in China doesn't stay in China. It reverberates around the world, affecting everything from the prices we pay for goods to the policies our governments adopt. Understanding the intricacies of China's economy helps us appreciate the interconnectedness of global economies. For more insights into world events and their impact, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, History Facts.